Hi there, I'm Derek Lynch. This talk is Accessibility First Development. I'm joined by Ethan Holliger. Uh, he'll be helping me give the second half of this talk. So I want to preface this talk by saying that I actually just attended RailsConf back in May, and the opening keynote was given by a guy named DHH, and he's the author of Rails. So he did something in his talk that I will be emulating here today, and that is to read you the majority of my talk. Um, when I try and do it from memory, I inevitably mess up. No matter how many times I practice, uh, I end up forgetting something, or I end up ad-libbing, and that's not good for anybody. So I think this is an important topic, and I really wanted to make sure that I covered everything. So I hope this will be a smoother experience for everybody. So with that, let's get started. So who are you? Uh, who is this talk for? Uh, this talk is for developers or engineering managers who want to make better accessibility decisions during the development cycle, but maybe don't know how yet. So, why should you listen to me? I work at Cirrus MD, and we take accessibility extremely seriously. We have frequent audits with the Blind Institute of Technology, where we have a user come in with a screen reader to audit our application flows. Our application is a messaging app that lets you chat with the doctor in under a minute. So, I've been at Cirrus for about 10 months, and I knew nothing about accessibility before I joined. The goal for this talk is to impart some of the lessons I learned about accessibility to everyone. With that, I want to talk a little bit about my first audit. Um, my first audit really changed the way that I thought about the internet and how to make it inclusive for everyone. And it really inspired me to write this talk, actually. So I hope to recreate some of my little aha moments that I had during that experience here today. And it's actually where I met Ethan. So this is a quote I wanted to call out. This was uh, said by Mike Hess. He's the founder of the BIT. Um, it's really stuck with me. He said it during my first audit, and it's that 90% of technical accessibility is super easy. You just have to do it. So today split into two halves. The first of which, I'll be going over some of the very basics of accessibility, and then Ethan will do a live audit of some real sites for you. When I was first constructing this talk, I took a poll amongst a group of my developer friends and some former colleagues, and an overwhelming majority of them told me that they didn't know anything at all about accessibility. So with that in mind, I decided to make this talk more about the basics and beginner friendly. It's really about the things to keep in mind and how to approach your development with an accessible mindset. Accessibility is an absolutely enormous topic and this is a very short presentation. So here's some of the stuff I will be covering today. The what and why of accessibility. DOM structure, WAI ARIA tags, tab ordering, and just simplifying your application. Finally, we'll end with the live on it. So, to begin, what is accessibility? Uh, you'll see it online as this acronym A11Y. This is a common acronym associated with accessibility. It's similar to K8S for Kubernetes or I18N for internationalization. I saw it called a numero name online. I don't even know if that's an official term, uh, but you do see it a lot on the internet. This is the W3C official definition of accessibility. I'll read it to you real quick. Accessibility addresses discriminatory aspects related to equivalent user experience for people with disabilities. Web accessibility means that people with disabilities can equally perceive, understand, navigate, and interact with websites and tools. It also means that they can contribute equally without barriers. Here's one that I got a little bit better. Web accessibility is the design of pages, tools, and technologies on the web that can be used by everyone. I like this definition because it's a little less verbose and more colloquial. So now that we covered basically what accessibility is, we'll go in a little bit about why accessibility, or rather why is accessibility important. This is a large topic, so this is just real quick. Um, it is our obligation to make the web usable for everyone. This is my opinion, but I understand that we're all businesses and sometimes there's 10 things to get done and only time for eight. And I also understand that prioritization is one of the hardest aspects of most of our jobs. So here's a little bit of incentive for why to prioritize accessibility. Basically, you can get sued for not having accessible website experience. I hope this isn't the only reason you choose to prioritize accessibility, but if it works, I won't knock it. Domino's was the first lawsuit to really draw national attention to this issue. And then according to the ADA, lawsuits have increased 210% year over year in 2017 and 177% in 2018. So it is a very real possibility and something you should take seriously. So now that we covered a little of the what and why, let's get more into the how. The first topic I wanted to cover was DOM structure. 
The most important aspect of this topic is writing semantic HTML. I cannot stress this enough. Screen readers are looking for semantic HTML5. It has implicit meaning for hierarchy. You should be using it. This is probably 40% of the solution right here, as it will help force you to organize your HTML properly. Using the correct HTML elements for their intended purpose is what screen readers are looking for, and those tags have an API that screen readers are looking for in terms of interaction and reading that content. So here's a little example of bad semantic HTML. We've all seen this before, using something like a span to create a clickable button. I've done it, you've done it, it's lazy, and it's non-semantic. Use that button tag. A button has implicit meaning. I am clickable. A span tag is ambiguous to a screen reader. A button is not. Next up under our DOM structure topic, I have a, uh, we have what I call using proper attributes. So rich multimedia like videos or images need all their at alt attributes so a screen reader can impart context to the user. It's helpful to be as specific as possible. This is an example I made up, but it's actually based on a real photo I saw of how. <laughs> so, next I want to talk a little about input tags. Input tags are extremely important, as this is the primary way that any user might interact with your site in a dynamic way rather than a passive way. So don't forget these attributes on your inputs. Name, state, role, and value. Pay special attention to name and role. This will help a user understand what you were looking for out of them. I'm sure Ethan can attest to how annoying it is to find an orphan input tag and have no idea what it's for. Having to scroll back and forth to the elements of a page to try and glean the context of what an input is for is a bad user experience. Don't make your users play detective. So our next high level topic will be tab ordering or a gross generalization. This is an example of an oversimplification to make my point. In real life, it's a lot more nuanced, but this is a good mental model for how to think about writing accessible HTML. So here's the gist. Screen readers will follow the DOM structure top to bottom. Well-organized semantic HTML will make this flow intuitive and easy. Also, a user can only interact with elements that are tappable. So think about it like this. Anything on your site should have the capability to be done using only the keyboard. So if you go screwing around with the tab index unnecessarily, you're going to dunk it up. What I mean by this is if you're shuffling elements around with CSS and they're out of order compared to their HTML structure, then screen reader is going to get it all jumbled up. So if you're reversing the order of your elements with a flex box, row reverse, or something like that, screen reader will interpret those elements backwards. So let's take a look at an example. This is a screenshot I took of a really quick, simple app that I wrote. In the HTML, I put three inputs in order with placeholders signifying their position in the DOM. I then used CSS to reverse the order on the page. I then used VoiceOver, the built-in Mac accessibility utility, to access the page. The first element it went to was input number one, because it was the first element in the DOM. This feels counterintuitive, though, because visually on the page, it's the third element. If you design your site to be used in the visual order above, then this will be backwards for a screen reader user. This is also a bad experience, so avoid using CSS to reorder content on the page whenever possible. Our next topic is WAI ARIA. It stands for Web Accessibility Initiative, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. So web apps are complicated. If your app is using Redux, Vuex, or something like Apollo, then you're probably going to need to look into ARIA tags. This is a very dense topic, and it's mostly out of scope for a talk about the basics. But we can talk a little bit about why ARIA tags are useful. This content is basically a regurgitation of the Mozilla developer docs on this topic, uh, and they have a great course you can go through for more information about the uh, basics of accessibility. So there are four main reasons why you might use ARIA tags. The first is for signposts and landmarks. This is essentially calling out especially important areas of your code using the role attribute. So an example would be highlighting a main nav or uh, drawing attention to a search and row page. The next is for dynamic content updates. So we live in a world of web sockets and dynamic content. This is essentially an API to read out loud live UI updates to a user. 
So we actually use this API at Cirrus to read out the messages that come in in real time from a doctor. Then we have enhancing keyboard accessibility. As previously mentioned, Semantic HTML has built-in APIs to help screen readers attach significance to their presence. Sometimes you do need a fake button with a span tag though, so ARIA tags can help you fake some of that keyboard functionality when you need it. Again, a screen reader user interacts with the page through the keyboard, so using this API ensures a user can access all the DOM content you need them to access. Finally, we have accessibility of non-semantic controls. Uh, this is very similar to the last one, but where the previous principle was more about the keyboard, this one is about building more semantic reasoning in the rest of your presentation on HTML. So if you're using non-semantic HTML practices and then rebuilding them with your ARIA tags though, you're just gonna make your life miserable. So it's key takeaway time. This is, this is another quote from Mike from the BIT, and that is, uh, too much is just as bad as too little. You can totally overdo the ARIA tags and make the page way too noisy, which is just as bad as not having enough information. Speaking of making the page too noisy, our final topic is simplification. The rule of thumb is simpler is better. And there's a lot of evidence that supports that making it simpler will help make your site a better experience for all of your users. The other thing to understand is that accessibility is more of an art than a science. In fact, one of our bad code examples that Ethan will be going through today got a fairly decent score when I ran it under the Google Accessibility Audit and the Chrome DevTools. But he's going to show you why it might be a frustrating experience in real life. Just like in regular user testing, your most surefire way of testing accessibility is by doing an audit with an actual user utilizing a service like the BIT. So here's an example of what I mean when I talk about a not so simple interface. ESPN.com. Seriously though, imagine sitting through a screen reader listening to every single element on this page. Gross. But compare that to the Google homepage. I think it was Mike Hess again from the BIT. He told me that he loves Google because of how simple and easy it is. Again, simple is better for everyone. Take out your noise. So now, if you're like me, when I first all heard about all this stuff, I said, uh, but wait, I know I can ask what the user agent is when a user visits my website. If they're using assistive technology, maybe I can optimize for that experience. I can turn off CSS, I can remove images, I can organize my inputs in a different way. That would be a better overall experience, right? Well, no, because that is illegal. <laughs> so it's illegal to create separate experiences via the ADA. So, very briefly, what did we cover? We covered the what and why of accessibility first development. We also covered the how, which can be broken down into the subcategories of DOM structure, including using the attributes on HTML elements and using semantic HTML. WAI ARIA tags for when you want to make, become an accessibility Jedi and make your dynamic apps more accessible. Tab order for when it, making sure you understand the basic flow of a screen reader through the document. And finally, at the end of the day, the simpler the content, the better for everyone. So this felt like a lot, but in reality, it is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to go into. You could probably do an entire talk on ARIA tags. Uh, I found some documentation of like every single ARIA tag that's available, and it's nuts. Um, there's a whole aspect of design-oriented accessibility, uh, mobile accessibility, which I think we just talked about. Uh, there's framework-specific things. You can Google accessibility for React apps. There's entire pages about how to do that with React specifically. Um, there's all kinds of like auditing tools that you could run. Um, I'm giving a talk tomorrow about Storybook. I'll talk a little bit about the accessibility add-on there. Um, so for real, when you start Googling some of this stuff, it's really easy to end up with 20 tabs in about five minutes, and they all keep just making the more awesome stuff. So with that, I'm gonna be handing the reins over to Ethan. Uh, he was previously working for the Blind Institute of Technology, and he currently works for Aetna as a digital accessibility engineer. So he's going to audit a couple sites for us live, but I did want to ask if there was anyone who's brave enough to have him sort of audit a product that you work on or a site uh, registration. <laughs> I know that's scary, but um, he's really awesome. He definitely talks about the good and bad stuff, um, but it's really eye-opening. So uh, with that, I'm going to get him hooked up, and if you want to do it, yeah. So, uh, Max 
have a wonderful screen reader built in called VoiceOver. Uh, VoiceOver can be turned on using a keyboard shortcut key uh, command in the F5. Welcome to VoiceOver. VoiceOver speaks descriptions of items on the screen and can be used to control the computer using only your keyboard. If you already know how to the voiceover quick start, correct, the voiceover keep move around, adjust, so tap into navigating tables. When you interact with tables in documents and so web pages, sure. you navigate vertically and horizontally using the voiceover commands you have already learned, the O and the arrow keys. To read tables by cup, so you, the, the, you use a, get more from your map. So the first time that the voice over on Safari, favorites, window, toolbar, <laughs> space, with Safari containing the window, stop, stop, favorites. Control uh, <laughs> keys not silencing speech, which usually would just let happen. Either I'm not pressing the right key or it's not working. Um, first time that you start voiceover, you will be presented with that message, which is a quick start guide, which will allow you to, um, whoops, uh, which will allow you to. Uh, go through a tutorial that they have set up and give you um, instructions on how to use the keyboard shortcut keys and navigate around using uh, voiceover. Um, as Derek said, the screen reader reads um, essentially what you put into the source code in order from um, top to bottom. Um, it it looks at the name, role, state, and value of each item, and if any one of those is not defined, the reader, reader may not be able to understand how to interact with it or how to read it properly. Um, so I think I'm in Safari or something now. Open location, yep. address, and search, edit text, has altered. So one of the... Um, websites that I discovered and has a pretty good accessibility that I want to demonstrate is Swiss. At tar bootstrap double I W double S S Swiss periods O M S Y closing menu Swiss.com insertion at beginning of text www.swiss.com slash us slash on cookie settings with the use of cookie and then the first thing that I come to the page link and the page heading level two cookie settings with the use of cookies, we can ensure the best user experience for you. Tell me about cookies. Okay, fine. We'll just move down the page and accept that because the developer decided we have to put on cookies. Link, and link, period. Necessary, necessary, necessary. Check statistics. Statistics, statistics, comfort. Comfort, unchecked. Comfort, Perception. show, select, leaving web content. Go back, button. Cookies, show details, select all and confirm, button. Select all. You are currently on a button. It press select all and confirm, button. Link, end of page, go to link image, star lines. Link, link, end of page, leaving sidebar button. HTTPS colon slash slash show slash exit, leaving toolbar, open search button, lost bed to return flight 16 slash 23 slash 08 slash 2009 1. Content selected, adults 12 plus years, increment less adults, dimmed button. Right, 12 plus years, return 1. You are currently on the text field. Um, let's see. On this page. To enter the flight group, heading level 2, flight main. Heading level one, important information. You are currently on main. Out of book last minute offers and cheap flights online for main. You are end of map, end, end of map, end, end. Heading level navigation. You are heading link, start page. Heading level two, skip links, link, link. Skip to site, link, heading map. Okay, yeah. I was just getting back to the top of the page, kind of orienting myself. Because when I pressed uh, the Accept all and confirm. My focus was placed near the uh, the bottom of the page, so I had to re re uh, orient myself to back to the top to figure out where it was. Um, so on this page, it provides some initial links at the very top, which is super convenient for me uh, navigating this site for the first time. I can heading see level two, skip links. Skip links. You are currently on heading level two. Link start page. ALT plus zero, access key available. The shortcut key, there's also shortcut keys um, associated with these links. Um, the, when activating one of these links, it can jump me to areas on the page um, that I may be interested in instead of uh, searching 
this entire page line by line looking for what I'm uh, what I want to do. Link. Skip to site navigation. Link. Skip to content. And there's Link. Like Contact. Link. Site map. Very hey, Link. Skip to search. Cool. End of net banner. Banner. Link image. Swiss. End of banner. Link you are currently on the banner. Swiss, which uh, it is alternative text that the uh, screen reader reads. Um, if it didn't have alternative text, it would just read link image, telling you that it could go somewhere, as well as it's a graphic of some sort. Um, those are a few of the things that the screen reader automatically uh, tells us without the developer having to do anything, as long as semantic HTML is used. Um, headers uh, are announced, um, heading level, as well as pressed, unpressed, um, checked, um, and links and, and graphics. Navigation. Heading level two. Navigation. Navigation. Collapsed menu pop up link. Book. Collapsed menu pop up link. Prepare. Um, you are currently on the menu pop link to click this. One way to easily get an overview of what the what semantic elements the screen reader can see, and I use this pretty frequently just to navigate. Um, by headings on the page to understand my um, structural layout of the page is with what's like the press control over, the voiceover rotor and that can be with control option U legs menu and then I can use the arrow keys left and right to go to legs menu um, headings menu headings and now I see immediately the list of headings that are on this page using up and down arrow keys. Heading level two, skip links. Heading level two, navigation. Heading level one, Swiss International. Heading level two, book your flight. Oh, that's what I want, so I'll press enter. Heading level two, book your flight. And my you are currently on heading level two. It's placed on that heading, where then I can use the arrow keys to move down. Las Vegas, LAS, content selected from, to, require, search text field. You are currently on a text. Put in a two field, I don't know what. D, E, N, dead. You are current Denver D E N button. You are current return flight check checkbox flight group. All right. You are currently on a check. Placed on a checkbox for the return flight. Return flight. Sixteen slash twenty slash two thousand nineteen. Come. So it's asking me what day do I want to leave? I wish I could leave today. Or <laughs> wow. Friday, August twenty third. Two. Uh, so I, I landed on the uh, date field and using the arrow keys. Sat Sunday, that, Sunday, S Sunday, Sunday, Saturday. I can use the arrow keys in any direction to choose a date. Monday, Tuesday, August, enter, return flights undefined. Search text. Enter to select that date and have it placed into that field. Outbound, return flights undefined. Search text field. You are currently on the text field. To enter text in this field, type return flight. Passengers group. Passengers. Currently selected passengers, you are currently on a text element. One adult, zero children, zero infants. Adults, you are currently 12 plus years. You less adults, dint button. One, insertion at end of text. More adults button. You are currently on a button. Children, two to 11 years. Less children, dint, zero. Contents selected, zero. Infants, zero to one years. Less infants, dint button, zero. Contents selected, infants, zero to one year. More infants button. End of passengers, search button. You are currently on a button. Another thing uh, to note um, that is also handy, aside from using headers to group elements on the page, is um, the use of regions or landmarks. Um, they use regions on this page. End of passengers group. You are currently in a group. Where it says um, end of passengers group. So they must have used either a, uh, a grouping element or a region element to uh, group these form fields together and provided a description of what this grouping of elements is for. Um, that will that provides additional context to the screen reader user. Um, these, these, this uh, content is related to one another. Search button. You are Search. we're almost ready for takeoff. Select group and date for error. 90% loaded. You are currently on attack. Got it. We were unable to find the flight for the chosen route. Consult the link timetable. Ignoring next key press. You are currently on a link to click route for this. Link time timetable clickable. You are currently on a text element. But um, in my opinion, this is a really good example of um, uh, a flight 
navigation, booking a flight, or, or going through to uh, fill out a form, uh, because other uh, flight uh, websites that I've experienced are not so friendly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have uh, done an audit with BIT in the past for the uh, Frontier website, and um, have even though the like Derek said the uh, automated tests for the website looked out looked, looked pretty good um, the user experience is not less than ideal um, so open location or you can eat why run on o n w del i fly front fly front fly front you are fly front at f you can walk, run, R O N T I E R period, C O fly, HTTPS hole. Does anyone here work for Frontier? There you go. Thank you. Stop loading this at HTTPS colon slash slash www.flyfrontier.com. Contents selected, address, and search edit text has alternate item. Stop loading this page button. All right. You are currently on the button. This page, or maybe not. HD, stop loading this page, favorites, scroll area, stop loading this page, button, closing menu, stop loading, leaving toolbar, press enter to select, use arrow keys to navigate, leaving web content, new tab, button, Las Vegas, LA, from, heading level 2, progress, main, heading level 2, skip links, navigation, yeah, I see that, open location, UKEOUT.YFRONTIER.com. HTTPS colon slash slash W in alert dialog. Don't allow button. The website flyfrontier.com would like to use your current location. Allow button. Allow button. Don't allow button. Don't allow button. Remember my decision. Don't allow button. Close button. 90% loaded. They also want to know you. 90% loaded. 90%. 90% loaded. Tell you. Some of these websites. 90% loaded. 90% loaded. Close button. Cancellations. Close button. Cancel Miss Gunders or White Group. <laughs> Safari busy. <laughs> Bit busy. Close button. Oh, no. You close button. Cancellations. Miss Gunders or White Group. Image. 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 You are currently on an image inside of web content. Low fares down right. Vertical line frontier error in low fares down right. Image. 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 Image, 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 close button. You are cancellate, close button. You are currently on a button. Inside of that, press close button. Cancellation, close button, close button. Press close button, close button. Cancel, close button. Press, 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 close button. You have cancellations. Miss Gunders or my leaving web content. Go back button, leaving toolbar. Okay, maybe I'll get to You are currently on a group. Inside of the group. Group. Close button. Press close, pre pre press close button. You are currently on Kent Miss Gunders. Image, image. Well, I think this is an image, image. Where image. I think I'll have to use a different browser. Um, because so far, I apparently, you are currently on an Made it impossible to close this, this dialogue or whatever that it is with the keyboard. So, um, let's see. So I have. Firefox That works. Uh, I hope. <laughs> yes, please. Because uh, I don't remember my Mac shortcut keys. Mix Safari low fares down. Two items. Spaces bar. Groups. Finder. In green zero items. Select desktop. Desktop. Group. Finder. Desktop. Firefox developer edition. That's it. Now in text. Blank. You are currently on the text field inside of the combo box. Do you That's it. This combo box. Here, let me, let me sign out LastPass real quick. Box, press control. Can you real quick? Just don't forget your LastPass pass. I'm good, man. Ingrid's your home selected. Firefox developer edition. Display brightness, 70%, 9, 37%. You are currently on a text field inside of a combo box. To exit this combo box, press control, oh, yeah. option, shift, up arrow. All right. Let me make sure that we're all set. <laughs> And you don't need my passwords for all my stuff. <laughs> all right, man. All right. Send it. So send what? Send it. Have to do what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. um, 
library button. Like text. Leading to our item palette. Search with Google. Firefox Developer Edition has. Alright, let's see. Uh, how do you ditch the address bar? I thought it was command. Yeah. Apple, Submit, Finder, Desktop, nope. Screenshot, August 15, 2019, nope. Nope. Fire, Firefox, Finder, 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 Firefox Developer Edition, right. Spotlight, Spotlight, System Dialog, Firefox Developer Edition, Command L, oh. Leading to our Item Palette, Library, Button, with Text, Blank. Oh, yeah. I can type stuff. Yeah. Firefox Developer Edition has new window. <laughs> End of text. Beginning of text. Beginning of text. It's very plausible that the uh, voiceover doesn't like uh, Firefox. End of text. Page actions button HTTPS colon slash slash www.flyfrontier.com. Contents selected. Tap. End of text. Beginning of text. No, it doesn't like it for some reason. It's, oh, it's slowly loading. Oh, it's slowly. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's good to know. It's moving it and I see it. It's very slow here. Get a lot of sick frontier bars there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> End of text. This is kind of an example of how a uh, less than ideal experience can happen with um, one browser yeah. and uh, kind of forces the user to use a different browser in sometimes, in some cases, screen reader combination to get uh, get something complete. Uh, and having that experience with uh, Frontier on Safari with all those uh, unlabeled images and the fact that I couldn't even tap to the close button and had to arrow to it um, is another example where uh, things were not properly labeled for the uh, screen reader to interpret or um, keyboard focus was not properly being managed. Cool. So I'm trying to look for a lot of material. Trying to? Yeah, well, still, still trying. Just hope. So. Is there a certain number of uh, um, browsers that you want to, I guess, have your screen reader working well with before you? Is, is there a number of browsers that you would want to uh, to have your screen reader uh, work with or tested with? Is that yeah? Your question? Like to pass, like maybe yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so there's there's recommended um, screen reader and browser combinations. Um, there's a WebEx survey that shows the most popular screen reader browser combinations. There's actually um, the WebEx is doing the eighth uh, annual survey, I guess you could say, uh, now and uh, will close sometime in September. Um, so you can use that as a resource to get an idea of what screen reader and browser combinations are being used throughout or through pe with people with disabilities. Um, the common screen reader and browser combinations are voiceover with Safari, and then on Windows, the combinations are NVDA and Firefox and JAWS and Google Chrome. Um, so those are the, the, the screen reader browser combinations that uh, work the best uh, with one another, but ultimately having if you, if it's possible, having all um, browsers tested for accessibility uh, would be ideal because you don't know what type of user uh, will be coming to yes. your site. Absolutely, it benefits everyone. Thank you. We have another computer. We're going to use this one. It's already on Fly Frontier. Really? Yeah, it works. works. <laughs> what is your name? Whoever you are. Thank you. Thank you. It's a Mac. It's a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty safe bet here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he used to that on the ground. Yeah, it's, it's only, it's a cheap, cheap Mac. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hit it. Oh, goodness. Thank you so much. All right. Um, 
need help identifying these keys because they're pretty flat. Yeah, this has the touch bar, so like, yeah. So I think you just have to touch the touch bar um, on the F5 spot twice or point. Uh, it's got not those keys out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, not those keys. Uh, well, we can do it the long way. Uh, go into settings inside of accessibility on the preferences. Uh, right. So you go into Apple preferences, accessibility, yeah, and then voice over. Enable voice over and enable voice over device. Voice over speaks descriptions of items on the screen and can be used to control the computer using only your keyboard. If you already know how to use voice over, press the B key now. If you VoiceOver on System Cracker. To toggle VoiceOver, quickly press Touch ID three times while holding the Command key. You are currently on a text element. Escape button. You are currently on a button. To press this button, enable to toggle VoiceOver, Void Accept Tool, Zoom, Dint, Butler, Tool, Accessibility Features, Table, VoiceOver, Selected. You are currently on a table. To enter this table, press Control, Option, Shift, Down Arrow. Chrome, new tab, Google Chrome, window, edit, bookmark, extensions, group, you, Chrome, book, web, con web, web content. You are currently on a banner, let in link, Gmail, out of link, Gmail. It's just a link, uh, Chrome. Link, images. Yeah, yeah. You are currently on a link, eatlogdenver.org. So, so, D. Facebook tab, Y, F, R, Y. Unzip, Chrome, at R, O. Unzip, M, N, T, I, E, R. Um, period, C, O. Low fare, sound right, vertical line, frontier airlines, web, con, new tab, button. Low fare sound right vertical line frontier airlines. Some in low fare sound right close button. Close button. Front link. Click here. If the page doesn't reload automatically, if it to get missing image descriptions, open the context menu. Unlabeled image. You are currently on an unlabeled image inside of a frame. So the first thing that I am presented with when I come to Frontier's website. Heading level two. Hang on a moment. Please wait just a moment while we validate your browser. You are currently on text element inside of a frame. Please wait just a moment while we validate your browser group. This page will reload and show a pop-up asking you to confirm that you want to continue browsing. Confirming will allow you to proceed without further interruption. This page will reload and show a group. If the page doesn't reload automatically, please link. Click here. Right. You are currently on a link inside of a frame. To click this link. Yeah, that, this is the, the first thing that screen reader users come to. Um, an experience when they experience this site. Um, so, but if period. I keep on going, you are currently on text element inside of a frame. To exit this web area, press Control Option. If I didn't know that, Option Shift, probably just leave this site, and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if I continue, you reach, you reach, trace A to me, trace 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 A to me, not frames you link now skip banner link now skip. You are currently on a link. Main content of the page, and they do have a skip navigation link. It says nav skip. Banner. Visited. Link. HTTPS colon slash expanded. Link. Travel. Book. Link. Link. Hotel. Link. Link. At my trips. Link. Man. Link. Check it. Link. Flight status. Man, a lot of links that I have to go through before I can actually get to the main content. Um, they, they do have collapsible and expandable um, buttons here. However, with the keyboard user just using the cap key, key alone, they, it expands every single one of these options. Um, so you can see, uh, like I have to press the tab key or the arrow keys um, several times before getting to the main content on the page. Let's see if I can use the headings. Links menu, headings menu, heading level two, hang on a moment. Heading level three, bundle and save. Heading level three, our best deals. Heading level three, discount dead. See if I can find it. Heading level three, work here. Heading level four, our C choke. Heading level, heading, 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 heading level two. Hang on a moment. 17, heading level three, bundle and safe. Heading level three, our best deals. Heading level, heading level four, FAQs, one item. I'm not sure what booking. Form controls, men, headings menu. Form to no items and web spots, men, landmarks, men, articles, men. Links menu. Content, low fare, links menu, link. Click here, link. Now skip, visited, expanded, link. Travel, link. Link, deals, link, best catch and travel, 
The warp bag is sale. Link. Link. Join now. Link. Get answers. Link. No one save. Back button. I'm not sure. You are coming in the voice of a woman. This is a flight on this thing. Heading to Okay. Maybe a Escape button. You are current closing. Link. Link. Travel. Link. Expanded. Hot. Login for Link. 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 Hot. Login vertical line. Sign up. You are currently on a text element. Okay. Log in, sign up. What a, okay, how do I activate that using the keyboard? Um, it didn't say link. But, so I can't really open that uh, sign in page with that, uh, the keyboard alone because I've got to press tab. Link, sign up for our latest deals. Link, travel advisory for your airport. So I just press shift tab to go to the previous uh, clickable element. Link, sign up for our latest deals. Skips it completely. Link, Trout Link, Hero Video Group. Um, you are currently in the group. So that doesn't work. Link, um, navigate list three items. Link, book a flight. Book you dimmed link, dimmed link, end of list, end of navigation, book a flight. One way, radio button, one of two, one way. You are round trip from star, from. You are currently on a text element. From edit text, Albany, New York, ALB, Albuquerque, New Mexico, AD. D E Albany, New York, A L at Bentonville slash Fayetteville, Arkansas, X on A, clickable on. You are currently on the text field. Two, sir, Bentonville slash Fayetteville, A R, Albuquerque, New Mexico, A B Q, one of forty nine. Visited link, unlabeled image, to get promo code, edit text. Pro dollars, selected radio. Jumped my focus to the bottom of the point. I mean, you go back. Dot large adult, sub large adult, on visited link, unlabeled image, promo code, edit text. Dollars, Warren Adult, select Warren Adult on Albany, New York, round trip, sub link, credit card, limited time, offer, take to the air, and visit, link, unlabeled. My focus is being jumped all around. Um, okay. Run, return dates are, depart, depart dates are, depart, depart, sub two, dim two, two, dim clickable text. Okay. You are currently on a text field, this select button, two, dim clickable text. You are currently on a text field. Two to select button from one adult unselected Albany New York A L B Albert D D E Albany New at Bet R X N A insertion at Sir Ben No slash Fake Mail A F two star two you are currently on a text element Albuquerque New Mexico D D at Albuquerque New Mexico A B Q audio out at Albuquerque New Mexico A B Q clickable D Albuquerque New Detroit Michigan D T W clickable Detroit D T select button Detroit M I you are depart dates are. Depart dates are edit text. Departure date. You are currently on a text field. To enter text in this field, type August 20th, 2019. Insertion at end of text. Depart dates are edit text. August 20th, 2019. Insertion at end of text. August 20th, 2019. Does any insertion at. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to do yours? Uh, I think we're out of time. You so that needs attention. No. Just real quick, do you have, for all the front-end developers in the room, is there something, is there a violation or a headache that you see on a daily basis that you want us to fix? Uh, uh, focus management, especially for uh, single-page applications, to manually set the focus at what the new content that is being shown on the page. Uh, otherwise, if keyboard focus is not set, then the uh, screen reader focus will remain where it was when the content changed. Thank you. Um, I also, just real quick, uh, how long have you been using screen reader technologies? Oh, forever. Um, <laughs> so I think it was Mike who said, years. yeah, Mike said you were like, he called you a Jedi, if I remember correctly. And he, I, I think it's important to note that he's sort of like in the top 1% of screen reader users. So when he's having a hard time, that means it's really bad because almost everyone else is going to be kind of worse at sort of figuring out how to navigate a site. Um, also, what, how fast do you, can you listen like words per minute? Oh, uh, at least 700. Oh. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I wish you could use your computer because listening to it is just like uh, mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty fast. Um, let me see. Form controls, web spots. Um, August depart dates are. You are currently on August 20th, 2019. Insertion at end of tap landmarks. Uh, Departure. Let's see how you adjust the, uh, the speech rate on this thing, but yes, uh, really fast. Flyfrontier.com. Contents? With Mac, um, probably up in the 85% uh, 
range is the uh, speech rate that I typically listen at. And this is at a, a rate of 40 or 50, I believe. Yeah. Do you generally prefer calendar uh, entry manually or what you're seeing here? Selected by scrolling through with the keyboard keys, or does it kind of depend? Um, it, it really depends on the, uh, what you want the user experience to be, but I totally think that being able to um, interact with the date picker using the arrow keys uh, provides less thinking for me to actually structure the date in a particular format. Um, you know, the month, day, year with slashes in between. Um, where, it, say, I know it's next Friday, but I don't know what the date is. I could use the arrow keys to easily navigate through the date picker and um, navigate to the date I want. But I see, I see arguments for both cases. So it's basically new. So I was gonna kind of quit it early. Well, not early, but way late. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, apologies for the technical difficulties. Uh, it was mostly the internet issues. Um, but a uh, quick plug for the BIT, the Blind Institute of Technology. So they do uh, consulting auditing services, which is kind of what uh, my company uses them for. They also do a lot of hiring. So if your company is ready to take that next step and do uh, higher accessibility engineers, they help with that. Um, and then I was also going to do a quick plug for my company. We are hiring a bunch of roles. So I will be around for questions for a while afterward. But uh, thank you everyone for coming. I appreciate it.